Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included. This is a continuation of an old series and the beginning of a new one, as it was. Uh, you may have noticed we're still in the Adventures in the Enderverse map, but we are not at cycle 4200, which is where we ended in the last episode. I struggled a lot this week with trying to decide how I wanted to proceed with this series. I been having a lot of trouble with the world that I had uh, between just the fact that it was 4,000 cycles old and lots of things were built inefficiently and a lot of lag all over the map and some other issues that were causing the game to crash I was just having difficulties with even playing in the map and I tried a couple different things one was to do some work to try to reduce some of those lag issues but I'm sure as some of you know, once their a map gets that old, if you haven't been building it to try to be efficient and lag free, it's very difficult to get to change it afterwards. Um, the other thing I tried was just doing a restart from the beginning, but it just did not feel right. I had put so much work into this world and I wanted to continue my all achievement run in this map with the spawn that we had done and the start that we had so what i decided to do was i rolled back all the way to cycle 100 and started doing some new work from that point so as far as our all achievement run we're back to the point where we were right after we finished the first of the three um, the first two of the three achievements that um, are gated achievements. So carnivore is done, locavore is done, so now we can eat planted foods and we can um, continue to eat basically anything that we want, but we are not yet able to use any source of power we want. We have to use... We, can, we cannot use natural gas, petroleum, wood, or coal until we get to 240,000 kilojoules. We're slowly getting there, but we're not there yet. So that's where we're at. Um, the other thing that I changed is that since I'm starting over at cycle 100, I decided I wanted to change the naming scheme I was using for our duplicates and change that up a little bit. I actually took an idea that uh, Sai had given me when we were talking about ways we could do I could do the Call to the Lamb series. And I'm going to name all of the duplicates after the presidents in order. And so right now we have the first 14 of the presidents in our world. And we're going to continue to add duplicates until we get to the point where we have all 46 of the U.S. presidents. And then I have four other names that I will put in to round it out to an even 50. And after that, that's where we're going to cap the number of duplicates we have which is considerably more than we had, but we also had not explored any of the planetoids other than the second one. So um, I have some different ideas on things to do with that, but we'll get to that when we get to it. To start off, I decided to build a kind of a interesting contraption. This is my new incubator room. It uses a lot of tricks that I've seen from different places, and I apologize, I don't remember who I originally saw the idea to use the trick here with the critter sensor in the door. If somebody does remember who originally came up with it, um, let me know so I can credit them in the comments. But I um, have a lot of tricks going on here. So first of all is I have two layers of different types of water here at the bottom. And so what that does is it makes it so that even though there's just a small amount of water since the uh, or salt water, the water on top of it makes this deep enough for critters to drown in, meaning that they can evolve into meat. The but because the water is only um, 66 kilograms here, that means it's not enough water to flood the critter drop off so duplicates can still come in and drop off critters at this drop off so when they do that they immediately go into a drowning state and they'll turn into meat i have an auto sweeper that then grabs anything that drops including the meat 
and puts it into our conveyor loader here, which takes all that products up here into our main storage. This auto sweeper then sorts out from our main storage. Any meat goes up here to the electric grill to be cooked. Any eggs that are that get dropped off into main storage get loaded into this conveyor loader here, which then brings those eggs back down here and drops them off into here. So basically the eggs sit here and they're incubating just slowly in the room and once they hatch, the eggs, the egg shell from them will get sent back to main storage. The critter itself will evolve into meat and the meat will get sent into main storage. Also, those eggs are sitting here within range of this auto sweeper so that we can keep all four of these um, incubators stocked with uh, stone hatchling eggs. And it was a little bit of a difficult thing to get it all worked out so that this auto sweeper could reach all of these incubators in order for it to reach an incubator and supply it with eggs it has to be hitting this tile the bottom left corner of the building as long as it can do that it can put it in so we had to kind of force everything in the way we we have it here um on top of that we have some automation this is something you may have seen me do in the last one i had it set up up here before but i changed it so it's just using these four incubators this timer sensor goes off once a day for 60 seconds and it starts off the loop where this filter gets a 60 second signal once it does it turns on this buffer which lasts for 60 seconds giving 60 seconds of power to this incubator and then it also sets off the filter for the next one. So as soon as this one is done being powered, this one starts being powered. And so in the end, each of these incubators stays on for 60 seconds at a time, which gives our duplicates just enough time to go around and get each one of them lullabied. And if we look, the power signal is right here right now. So this one is the one that's set to be on. So our duplicate comes in lullabies it shortly thereafter the timer runs out and this incubator stops being powered because we don't need it to be powered anymore because the egg has been lullabied and then after that timer is off the next one turns on and this egg is now available to be lullabied so someone should be coming to do it shortly might take a few seconds for somebody to get assigned to it but in the end all four of these eggs get lullabied every day and we only have the not enough power at a time to run one of them so instead of running all four we just have the one getting power or one drawing power and they're only on for 240 seconds i think that one got missed because there's too many other high priority things going on which is fine um, our duplicates are dealing with some starvation issues, so I have some high priorities on food and whatnot until we get uh, enough excess food into the colony. Where we're at as far as food goes is I have some farms down here. They're having some pressure issues because we don't have enough uh, oxygen in the colony to keep things pressurized right now, but they're giving us a little bit of food. The main source of food is coming from the meat from our hatches. We now have all of these stables full, so any excess eggs that hatch get dropped off right in here, and so we are getting excess meat from the farm. It's just, we just reached that point, so we don't have any kind of a backlog yet. We're getting there. We do have some meat here that needs to be cooked. We have some meat that's being cooked right now. The last thing that we're doing to finish this project is I just added in this auto sweeper. So in this container, we're putting in edible, just the items that are um, finished products. So we could put omelets in there. We have the barbecue. Cooked seafood would go in there. Um, a lice loaf would go in there. So those are the finished products we're making right now. So 
this auto sweeper will pick up those items, drop them off in here, which will allow them to get brought down to our food storage so that they can get put into the refrigerators. And then finally, I'm going to have an auto sweeper in here that will pick it up and put it into the refrigerators to try to keep them um, from going stale as much as possible. This is uh, mostly a temporary solution because I hope to soon be working on doing a deep freeze system. Let's see, is that gonna have enough power? It's gonna be close, but that's fine. Um, but this will at least give us time so that the food won't go bad while we're waiting until we get that system set up. As far as the next projects we need to work on, priorities right now are the only oxygen being supplied to the colony is a little bit from an oxygen diffuser that's running the little bit of algae we have left. And we have an electrolyzer here, which is running full bore, but it's just in the open. So it's pumping out oxygen into the base um, but it's also pumping out hydrogen and I think the first thing I'm going to do is add a second one of these just as a temporary solution because I need more gas pressure in the base but our long-term solution is to make a uh, self-powered oxygen machine that will only put out oxygen into the base and will contain all the hydrogen and use hydrogen for power which will also help us reach the super sustainable achievement faster. Um, so yeah, that's our main priority is getting our oxygen situation sorted out. We also, we did set up a little bit of a gas filter down here. Let me see if I can show it to you. I just have a gas pump down here by our carbon skimmer that is pulling out the gases in the base it's running them through this filtered pipe. Carbon dioxide is being dropped into this infinite storage room, chlorine into this infinite storage room, and then oxygen and polluted oxygen is being released up here. The polluted oxygen is coming out of this vent, which is right next to the deodorizer. So as long as it's not coming out full bore, this deodorizer will be fast enough to eat up all that polluted oxygen, turn it into oxygen. Issue is, is we're getting very clogged with hydrogen up here. So I also think I'm going to put in a gas pump up here and start pulling out that hydrogen, but we need somewhere for it to go first. And that's where building the, the oxygen system is priority. I did dig out this area for that. This is where I want to put the oxygen set up. So we'll get to that and get that built very soon. That'll be our next project. But at the moment, we still need to keep a good eye on our food resources and make sure that we don't have any duplicates starving. So we're getting there, but it's, 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 a, it's a lot of work. But my main focus in going forward in this playthrough, as opposed to the last one, the last one, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just trying to learn how to do everything to get the achievements. This time I'm going to take things a little slower and I'm going to make sure every everything is finished before I move on. So we won't move on to expanding out into the rest of the map until we get this base set up so that it is not just functional, but that it is um, as as clean and efficient as we can make it so that we have space for the duplicates that we're going to have going forward and that they have food that is sustainable and oxygen that's sustainable. And then once we have that set up, we'll clean up the base that we have so that we have the space sorted out and we will then move on into the rest of the map. The last time we kind of cleared out the entire map and then we had a lot of space to deal with, a lot of gases mixing. We had a lot of pathfinding set up. This time, I don't want to have all that. I want to make it a much more efficient map with a lot less lag. So I'm going to work on getting us set up to build our oxygen system over here, and then we will continue forward. We've gotten our oxygen system built up we're just getting a little, few minor things finished with it. One is that we have this 
polluted oxygen in here that I would really like to get out. So I'm waiting for this gas pump to pump it out. There it goes. So now what we can do is we can actually, let's disconnect the power to it. Do it that way. Um, no. Can't do it that way either because that power line runs where we need it. We're just going to pull this gas pump out. That gas pump was there just to empty this room out of other gases. Now this room is entirely hydrogen, which is what we want because this is our hydrogen storage room and the hydrogen will help to uh, distribute the heat more evenly through the room. We're using the hydrogen itself to cool off the system. Right now, we are reconnecting this oxygen line back into the base because we want to start pumping oxygen out. I have everything merged together at the moment. In the end, it won't be like that. I just wanted to do that for now to keep all the, everything moving while I get everything set up. We're gonna end up running three lines into the base or at least three lines out into different places. Um, and we're going to have to make uh, infinite oxygen storage here eventually. But for now, I just wanted to get this running because we were, we were getting to the point where we really needed oxygen. As far as our food goes, we are definitely making a surplus of food, which is great. We have, if we look at our egg numbers, we have 81 stone hatchling eggs and 31 hatchling eggs. Which means they have 110 eggs in the map at the moment. So since each egg, when it's not being incubated, takes 20 cycles to hatch, that means if we have 110, that means we're getting about five and a half eggs hatching naturally and turning into meat. That doesn't uh, also, it doesn't count, account for the eggs that are being lullabied and accelerated as well. So we're definitely making at least five probably closer to six barbecue every day. Since each barbecue is 4,000 calories, that means we're producing 24,000 calories and our 15 duplicates are only consuming 15,000. So we're getting 9,000 excess a day. So this barbecue number is gonna to continue to uh, pump up. We also have a lice loaf that's being produced. I'm gonna let that go just for a little while longer, but then we're gonna be pulling this stuff out because I don't want to overproduce food because we don't have the ability to make a blast chiller yet to store the food uh, permanently. If you look at our food in here, lice loaf's already going stale. Barbecue is also going to go stale. So we're going to have a lot of food going stale soon because we're not able to eat it fast enough. In fact, looking at those numbers, I, I really want to pull these out right now because I don't want to be wasting duplicate energy and resources to keep them growing when we do not need them. So I'm gonna pull them all up. We can put them back in later if we ever need to. But for now, I think we, we have made it through to the age where barbecue is our primary food source. In order to make the blast chiller, we need to have steel so that we can make uh, steam turbine and a little bit of plastic. And then we also need to have oil because oil has a f oil is a fluid that can go down to oops. Oil. Let's see. Let's bring it up just so we can see it together. Oil can go down to minus 40.1 degrees. We need to get things down to minus 18 in order to get them deep frozen. So if we tried to do that with water, which has a freezing point of minus 0.6, when we got below this point, the water would freeze to a solid and crack pipes. And if we look at polluted water, which is our other option right now, it has a freezing point of minus 20, which means we could just about get there, but it would still be very difficult. The only other option we have, and I don't even know if we have it yet, would be salt water. So let's check that out. Uh, 
salt water only goes down to minus seven before it turns into brine. And then minus 22 when it turns into ice. Interesting. We could probably make it work using salt water and brine, but it would be very, the margin would be very small. And most importantly, in order to get to steel, I mean, you can get to steel without oil, but not very likely. And we'd still need the oil to make plastic. So we definitely need oil. So we may as well use the oil to do it. But basically we're gonna set up a similar setup to what we've had in the last one with a blast chiller, but we're gonna make it a little more compact and efficient. And we're probably gonna pick a place to do it. So that's gonna be the focus of our next episode. And we're also going to be relocating stuff in here. Now that we actually have the ability to pump oxygen in and clean up all these gases, I wanna get this area nice and tidy but I do, as much as I do not want to rush through, I do need to get to the oil pretty quickly because otherwise we're gonna have a large amount of food getting spoiled again, and I do not want to waste food any more than I have to. So that's gonna be the focus of our next episode is getting everything cleaned up, getting our base built to the point where it can support the 15 duplicates we have. I'm actually probably gonna push up to 20 in this base uh, before we move on any farther. Um, and we're gonna get down to the oil biome. I'm not gonna clear out a large section to get to it. I'm just gonna make a tunnel down to the oil biome so that I can make just enough of a space in it so that we can get um, steel production and plastic production up. And then that's all we're gonna do in the oil biome for now. But Looks like we've reached the end of this episode. We've gotten quite a bit done restarting at cycle 100, getting our food production up and getting our auction production up. I hope you guys are enjoying watching it. I'd love to have some feedback on what you think of the idea of restarting at cycle 100. And uh, yeah, any other uh, comments you have would be great to hear. Um, I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.